All right, first and foremost, I'm going to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom to all you sincere hearted, true believers. All right, today's lesson, the appointed time is nigh at hand, right? Meaning it's near at hand, right? Uh, speaking of, you know, just these different prophecies, you know, unfolding, right? These big major ones, speaking of, you know, the CBDCs, uh, uh, which is, you know, the mark of the beast, right? Um, you know, World War Three. You know, famine, pestilence, you know, uh, uh, these hypersonic missiles, you know, uh, uh, hitting the shores of uh, Babylon, right? This great whore. Um, also, uh, the famine of the world, all of these different things, you know, uh, one way or another are tied in to another. And we see these things, you know, tra uh, uh, transitioning, you know, we see the times transitioning and, and, you know, into these prophecies unfolding, right? So I got this little video. I'm not even about to play the video, but I, I just want y'all to see, right? Um, if you hear Biden talk, he'll say, "Well, you know, there's Peter Schiff. He's like a uh, like one of these like chief economists, like uh, uh, American. Like I don't know where he's from, but I know he's like a, a chief like, economist. Like basically, like he analyzes the stock market and different things like that. So you know, people, uh, people, a lot of people like listen to this guy, right? Um, it says Great Depression, worse than the 1930s, coming this year, right? So. And I've been hearing even from just regular uh, uh, Joe Blow people in the world that they've even heard that things are about to get real bad, you know, starting after, you know, July, summertime. Right. You know, and, and this is what brothers, you know, the Heavenly Father's been having brothers go into a lot lately because this time is coming. You know, we're only like we're in April. Uh, it's about to be halfway through the month of April. So uh, when is uh, when is the summer come? June, April. May, June, right? It's two months away. And then right after June is July. And then July, they're supposed to be coming out with this uh, Fed now CBDC for America, right? And then a the month after with August, that's the uh, next CBDC that they trying to come out with, with, um, with the Brick Nations, man. So all of these things are actually happening and it's happening in our lifetime, right? Because you have a lot of people basically saying that, um, you know, or basically, you know, they, they, they were under the impression that they thought that they, they they thought that the coming of Yahweh Shai was actually going to come, you know, maybe maybe 80 years from now, 100 years from now, not in their lifetime, maybe in their grandchildren. No, it's actually happening now. And a heavenly father actually takes offense. So when people uh, uh, say things like that. Right. So I have this right here in Ezekiel. Um, let me push that over. Ezekiel, the 12th chapter. And I'm going to start at verse 21. Right. In the NLT, it says, again, a message came from the, uh, from Hadawan came to me from Hadawan, the son, son of man. You heard that proverb they quote in Israel, time passes and prophecies come to nothing, right? This is what a lot of people think, man. They think that these prophecies were never going to come to pass. And that's just not the case. And then ultimately, uh, unbeknownst to these people, it's really coming speedily and swiftly, right? It says, um, time passes and prophecies come to nothing. Tell the people this is what the sovereign uh, Lord says. I will put it into this proverb and will soon stop quoting it. Slaki, and you will soon stop quoting it. Now we'll give them this new proverb to replace the old one. The time has come for every prophecy to be fulfilled. There will be new look, there will be no more false visions and flattering uh uh and flattering predictions in Israel. What's one of the flattering predictions? That it's gonna be nothing but peace and harmony and everything's just gonna be fine and dandy, right? And you see that where, you know, um let me go ahead and grab this in the book of Jeremiah, right? Because they've been doing this since ancient times, man. You know, biblical times. Jeremiah 14 and verse 14, it says, um, matter of fact, let me see. Then I said, so Lord, the prophets are telling them. All right, yeah, matter of fact, I'm going to start at Jeremiah 14 and verse 13. It says, uh, and, and LT, it says, Jeremiah 14 and 13. Then I said, O sovereign Lord, their prophets are telling them all is well. No war or famine will come. The Lord will surely send you peace, right? So this is what they're saying. But the Heavenly Father telling us through the scriptures that what? War, famine. You know, and, and pestilence, that stuff is coming, right? Verse 14, it says, Then Hadawan said, These prophets are telling lies in my name. I did not send them or tell them to speak. I did not give them any message. The prophecy of visions and revelations they have never seen or heard, right? It says, They speak foolishness made up in their own lying hearts. Therefore, this is what Hadawan says. I will punish these lying prophets, for they have spoken in my name, even though I have never sent them. They say that no war or famine will come, but by but they themselves will die by war and famine. Right. So you have a lot of people in Israel talking about, you know, Jacob's trouble is gay. Jacob's trouble ain't going to happen. You know, uh, you know, uh, um, 
basically like you know guys that's pushing that you know we bugged out and whatnot man it's, that's that's nonsense man the scriptures tell you right here right so i'm gonna read on right because this is this is this is this is this is nothing new it's been happening this thing been happening right prophets that were you know that that, that were sent by the heavenly father to actually warn you of things to come right like it says in ezekiel the third chapter right give them warning uh uh, uh from matter of fact i'm gonna go ahead and grab it i'm in the book of ezekiel right here ezekiel 3 because this is what a prophet is supposed to do right ezekiel 3 and 17 son of man have made thee a watchman unto the house of israel therefore hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me right so the point is we're supposed to give the people warning from the heavenly father to what to repent to get right to do right so that way when the time comes for the heavenly father to issue out judgments upon the nation of israel as well as these other nations right what's going to happen if you repent you're going to be safe you see what i'm saying and what does it mean what is what is true repentance you know changing right seeking out the heavenly father offending less like it says in a uh, uh Sarek, the 17th chapter return unto hadawan and forsake thy sins make thy prayer before his face and offend less so that's the point man right that's what we're supposed to be doing you know as the true men of the heavenly father the true prophets of the heavenly father so if somebody's telling you that all oh, everything is just going to be fine and dandy now ultimately that's you know no let's keep it in context right everything is going to be fine and dandy for the believers but ultimately there's still destruction war famine evil pestilence coming to the world right to the to, to america babylon it's striking it's striking all across the world right but ultimately those who fear the heavenly father Everything is going to be to what for them, right? Because Romans 8 and 28, all things to work together for the good of them that love and fear the heavenly father, right? Uh, so I write 33 and 1, there shall no evil uh, uh, touch. There shall no harm happen unto him that fear of the heavenly father. So these scriptures like that, that show you, 2 Ezra 2 and 27, that show you we're going to have abundance. We're going, we're going to eat during times of uh, Jacob's trouble and, you know, and famine and whatnot. But ultimately, it's not saying, it's a, it's a whole different, uh, 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 it's a whole different thing if you just say it ain't coming at all. Like, that's a lie. You see what I'm saying? Because ultimately, we're going to be Tawab. I don't want to desire. You know, I'm of the elect as well as you sincere hearted true believers. We're going to be good. But it is coming to the it is coming to the land. For sure, for sure. And these people, these prophets, they lying, man. You know, you got a lot of guys talking about ain't none of this stuff about to happen, man. Ain't no, ain't no chip. Like, just none of the stuff that, you know, that's in the scriptures. Ain't nothing. Ain't none of that about to happen to them. You know, according to according to what they say. Right. So I'm going to read it on. I'm going to read uh, Ezekiel 12 again. Ezekiel 12 and verse uh, 24 it says, There will be no more. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to read this again. Tell the people this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will put an end to this proverb and you will soon stop quoting it. Now give them this new proverb to replace the old one. The time has come for every prophecy to be fulfilled, right? The time is come, the appointed time, right? Like it says in Habakkuk, the second chapter. Uh, um, how does it go? Shoot. Um, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, and at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though, uh, though, um, though, it wait, Terry. Uh, let me just get it for y'all. Let me try and quote him. Yeah, but basically, like, what, what does it say? It, it said that um, basically the time for these prophecies to come is now, man, and we see it. Habakkuk chapter two, verse three. It says for the uh, for the vision. Read this in the KJV. One you gotta read that. All right, uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And it's not tarrying. The Heavenly Father is actually bringing it to pass. And this is a beautiful thing, man, because we're getting to witness it, right? And I don't want to ride the we're of the elect, as well, uh, uh, and a few sisters of the remnant, right? That means that we about to experience like different miracles about to pop off and all of these different things. But these people prophesying against this time to come, right? This time, this time that's nigh at hand, right? They don't want these. They, they don't want these things. They don't want the kingdom, right? Because if they wanted the kingdom, they would understand that they would have to, uh, you know, go through this dangerous, dangerous path that we have to go through, right? But ultimately, you know, we're gonna be, we're gonna be to wob on it, man. Because in order to receive that inheritance, like it says in Second Ezra, the second, uh, seventh chapter, ninth verse, if um, I think I'm gonna just grab it, instead of quoting it, you know, go ahead and grab it. Uh, second Ezra's, we gotta, we gotta go, we gotta, uh, set forth on that path. Second Ezra chapter seven, verse nine. 
bear with me i'm operating on, on on another phone right now so like the whole like is an android so it's like it's different second of seven and nine it says if this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance these people don't want to go through the straight gate they want everything peaches and cream and easy well that's not that's not what it that, that's not what the scriptures tell us man so right chapter two uh, uh the second chapter says if thou come to serve the heavenly father prepare thy soul for temptation man you know, set thy heart right and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Endure means you're going to have to go through some stuff. You're going to have to keep pressing forward. But at the end of that, we got the promise that what? We're going to receive that inheritance, right? So just telling the people, right? Because probably they they, they scared within themselves. Like it says in Isaiah, the 33rd chapter, the 14th verse, it says the sinners of Zion are afraid. Fearfulness of surprise the hypocrites, right? Because why? The fearfulness is, is shrinking these hip hypocrites because they didn't think that this time was going to come because they believed their own lies, man, Right? The Heavenly Father to deceive these people that to go ahead and deceive others that that were actually believing uh what they saying. But ultimately they really believe what they what, what they thought they was uh, uh preaching, man. And now that, that that these things are actually happening, like it says in Isaiah 33, 33rd chapter, the 14th verse, fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Why why is it coming to a surprise? Because they didn't think it was gonna come, man. Right? Like it says in um which I just had it, but I'm gonna grab it for your um second Peter three and four. Second Peter chapter three, verse four. And it says, and saying, <clears throat> yeah, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Right. It says, for this, they are willing to ignorant of. Da, 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 da. No. OK. See, so that's it. Right. So the point is. Right. So they so basically what they say is, oh, man, everything, you know, everything continued on since David and them, you know, uh, went back to the spiritual world. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, everything just continue on to keep going as it is. Ain't nothing about to happen. Ain't no prophecy about to happen. That's what they think, man. Right. But also, that's not the truth. Right. Dang, I can't get it. Um, yeah, because this is just a KJV app. It was, I think it was pretty sharp. And uh, let me see, let me see what it say in the NLT when I go to uh, this app. Hold on. Second Peter chapter three and verse four. I'm gonna read it in the NLT. See what it say. It says, um, "They will say what happened to the promise that uh, Yahweh Shai is coming again. From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. Right? So yeah, that's the point. They saying everything. Where, where, where Yahweh Shai at?" You know, everything just been the same. You keep talking about how this this thing about to pop off and everything, but ain't nothing happened yet. Ah man, y'all y'all talking nonsense, right? Like the scriptures say in Jer book, uh, book of Jeremiah, they say that the uh, the prophets of the heavenly Father are all, are, are, are all windbags. You see what I'm saying? That's that, that's what they call us, windbags. Ah man, they just talking how they're right. But ultimately now they're surprised. Why? Because the heavenly Father is actually bringing this thing to pass, man. Right? Going back to Ezekiel the um uh, the twelfth chapter. I'm reading verse 24 in the NLT. It says, there will be no more false vision and flattering predictions in Israel. That's a flattering prediction. Everything just, ain't nothing, ain't nothing going to happen. Everything going to continue on as it once was. That's not the case. That's not what's happening now. Verse 25, for I am not, uh, for I am how to want. If I say it, it will happen. Therefore, Salakia, there will be no more, uh, uh, no more delays. You're rebel, uh, you rebels of Israel. I will fulfill my threat to dest uh, uh, of destruction in your own lifetime. I, the sovereign Lord, has spoken. Then this message came for uh came to me from how to want. So the so the heavenly father saying, and your lifetime is gonna happen, right? And we can see it's coming to pass, man. Beautiful thing. Continuing on, verse 27. Son of man, the people of Israel is saying, he's talking about the distant future, right? Yeah, yeah, you, you know, when my grandkids, grandkids come. That then then it'll happen. And even if that was to happen, then they would say the same thing, man. It's, it's like, nah, bro, the heavenly father. He's saying, no, nah, just because you said that, I ain't even going to delay it no more. Because really, the Heavenly Father was delaying it so that way, you know, like it's saying, uh, I believe in 2 Peter, the third chapter, where it said, oh, that all should come to repentance. But ultimately, the Heavenly Father knows that that ain't going to happen because he already prophesied, you know, uh, he already had it written. And um, Zechariah, uh, I believe the 13th or 12th chapter, where it says that two parts, shall, uh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Right, so reading on, uh, I gotta finish this lesson soon. I want my break over. Uh, verse it says, uh, "Son of man, uh, the people of Israel are saying he's talking about the distant future. His visions won't come true for a long, long time. Therefore, tell them this is what the sovereign Lord says: No more delay. I will now do everything I have threatened. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. So that's the point, man. The heavenly Father is speaking. And how does the heavenly Father speak? Amos nine and sixteen. It's uh, like uh, Psalms nine and sixteen. It says, um." 
How the wine is known known by the judgments in which he executeth. Uh, the wicked are snared in the work of their own hand. How are they? How are they snared? Because they've been sowing nothing but wickedness. So that's what they about to reap. Like it says in Isaiah, the uh, uh, the third chapter. I mean, uh, the third chapter, uh, the eleventh verse. Woe unto the wicked! It shall be ill with him. He shall be rewarded for the work of his own hand. So basically, what they was doing, that's what they about to reap now in this time of destruction, man. Right. So the heavenly Father, He's not going to delay it anymore. He's about to do uh, all that He purposes to do. Right. And that's the destruction. Isaiah thirteen and nine. All right, the day of Ottawa cometh cruel, but with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. And we see that that time is coming, man. So I don't want to ride as I, you sincere hearted, true believers, were edified, exhorted, and comforted. And with that, shalom, y'all.